Picture this. You wake up one morning to find out that you're a multimillionaire. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Buy your dream home? Or a fancy sports car? Would you believe it if I told you that someone who had been employed as a gas station attendant and a janitor had managed to accumulate an impressive fortune of nearly $8 million? And not even his wife knew about this. Well, that's the true story of Ronald Reed. By the time he was 92 years old, he was worth $8 million, and he'd achieved it all by himself. This wasn't the result of a huge lottery win or a massive inheritance from a rich relatives either. He built his fortune by utilizing tools that are readily available and strategies that anyone could implement. Before we continue, I have a question for you. What would you do if you were a millionaire? Would you share some? Let me know in the comments. Now, back to the story. Ronald Reed was born in 1921. He was raised in a modest home in Vermont, USA, with his family, who were farmers. As a young boy, he truly enjoyed his schooling and used to walk four miles to his high school in Brattleboro every single day. A journey he kept up until he graduated. In fact, in 1940, he was the first person in his family to get his high school diploma, which was a major milestone in those days. After that, he served in the military for five years, but by 1945 he was back in Brattleboro and ready to go on with his life. After coming back to his hometown, he got a job right away at Haviland Service Station as a gas station attendant. He stuck with the same place of employment for the following 34 years. By 1979, which was when he was in his late 50s, it was time to call it quits. However, he was too enthusiastic to quit and stay occupied. As the saying goes, a penny earned is a penny saved. So, once his stint as a gas station attendant ended, Ronald got a part-time gig as a janitor at J.C. Penny department store. He put in another 17 years at the job. Our friend Ronald had a secret though. Not only was he a hard-working employee, but he was a quiet investor too. So, when did Ronald become a secret millionaire? How did he know how to invest without making any mistakes? I'll get to that in a moment. Let's be honest guys. It takes a significant amount of effort to learn how to invest in the stock market. First, let's start by exploring Ronald's life and habits. He was quite private and enjoyed splitting wood and taking trips in his pre-owned Toyota Yaris. He also took pleasure in collecting stamps and coins. He had a very unpretentious demeanor and most people who spoke to him from his town didn't believe he was a man of great wealth. When everyone found out how much he was worth, it came as a complete surprise. His lawyer, however, was aware of the reasons why people didn't believe the man was wealthy. It was because of his appearance and the way he managed his funds. When Ronald approached his lawyer later on in life, she assumed he didn't have ample money. He was wearing a somewhat faded jacket, a basic flannel shirt, and a worn-out baseball cap. Ronald was happily wed to the woman he met while employed at the gas station. He purchased a house for $12,000, and she moved in with her two children. Although they never had any kids of their own, Ronald truly loved his stepchildren as if they were his own. He was passionate about ensuring they got through college, so he paid for their tuition fees. He got along really well with his colleagues. Because of the way he looked, some of his co-workers thought that he was in need of financial help. But when they offered it to him, he politely refused. Ronald was simply a frugal person, but he gained a lot of respect for three reasons. He was easy to work with, he was down-to-earth, and most importantly, he had a terrific sense of humor. He enjoyed going to the cafeteria at the local memorial hospital on a daily basis. He'd come in every morning and get a cup of coffee and an English muffin with peanut butter. He'd always sit at the same spot, sip his coffee, pay for his lunch, and then head back to the road. A few years later, the hospital cafeteria sadly closed and Ronald had to find a new coffee shop. That's when he discovered Friendly's and began eating there for morning. The local hospital's development director happened to be a regular at that cafe. And he suggested Ronald go to the nearby library. Ronald's eyes brightened when he heard about it. Once he had a library card, he began borrowing stacks of books every week, eagerly studying them. In fact, 
he fell in love with a specific newspaper, the Wall Street Journal. He enjoyed coming to the library and would either drive himself or ask one of his stepchildren to take him. He'd study the stock market and investments for hours and hours, until he knew which companies were worth investing in. But here's how he secretly made his fortune. 1. He made sure to live well below his means and was known for his money-saving habits. Now, saving is just the first part of the equation, the overwhelming majority of his wealth came from investing. 2. He made sure to only invest in companies he fully understood, which allowed him to avoid market frenzy like the dot-com bubble. He started small, until his safe deposit box was becoming an ever-growing mass of stock certificates. 3. He had the patience to hold these companies over the long term. He began his investments a few years after he started working as a gas station assistant, and he held on to several blue-chip companies for quite a while. That's what helped his money multiply. 4. He also invested in companies that paid substantial dividends, or bonuses, in layman's terms. Therefore, he could use that money to buy more stocks. Ronald was not a very tech-savvy guy. He didn't even begin investing until he was 38 years old. His focus was on companies he read about in the library books he used to borrow, and didn't get caught up in the latest trend at the time. He held more than 95 stocks when he passed away distributed across several industries such as telecommunications, healthcare, consumer products, railway transportation, and public utilities. Nobody in his family had any idea how much money he had or what he was worth. They assumed that his salary as a janitor was barely enough to get by. He left almost $2 million to his two stepchildren, caregiver, and some friends. He donated $4.8 million to the Brattleboro Memorial Hospital, and another $1.2 million to Brooks Memorial Library where he used to study. Giving back to the community and people he'd spent his life with was one of the most important things he did. Bottom line, Ronald was a wealthy man in more ways than just money. His story is a testament to the power of hard work, frugality, and smart investments. Despite his modest beginnings, he was able to build a fortune and leave a lasting impact on his community. His life serves as a reminder to us all that success is not defined by the size of your bank account, but by the impact you make on the world. If you learned something new today, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this story inspiring and that it reminded you of the impact you can have on the world. See you in the next one.